chance and the opportunity to uh, speak here. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, how do scattering amplitudes of uh, particles, strings, and uh, some generalizations of them all arise from uh, combinat combinatorial geometry. Uh, this is uh, work done, uh, uh, based on uh, work done with uh, Nima Akani Hamid, Yong Tao Bai, Gong Wang Yan in this paper, and more to appear with Nima and uh, two mathematicians, uh, Hugh Thomas and Thomas Lam, uh, as well as uh, uh, Julio Salvatore. Okay, so um, the search for some holographic S matrix theory um, has led to uh, a, a lot of discoveries that. Uh, there are a number of fascinating geometric structures underlying scattering amplitudes. They're all in some auxiliary space. So the most famous example is the moduli space of perturbative string theory, where we compute uh, string amplitudes using CFT correlators on this geometric object. And in this program of twister strings and scattering equations, we use the same well sheet, so the same geometry, uh, but now only for particle scattering without any stringy excitations. Uh, there's probably a less familiar but even richer geometric structure called the amplitude hedron for planar n equals four superior mu's uh, that has been a uh, uh, very interesting uh, discovery over the past few years. I want to emphasize that all these geometries have something in common. So they have these factorizing boundary structures, uh, meaning that their boundary looks like products of geometries of the same kind. Uh, and uh, this is where the locality and unitarity of these scattering amplitudes naturally emerge from geometries um, without ever referring to the bulk space time. Okay, so there's yet another class of geometries that, uh, uh, to my best knowledge, haven't played the direct role in scattering amplitudes, uh, which are the so called cluster polytopes or generalized associated hedron uh, for finite type cluster algebra. So if you have never heard about cluster algebra, here is a one sentence explanation of it. Uh, basically, you, you have a quiver diagram with cluster variables associated with them, and uh, uh, you, have, you, you can start to mutate the, uh, uh, the, the, the quiver and the variables according to some rules. So in general, you never stop. You produce infinite number of new variables, but if and only if the quiver is a thinking diagram, then uh, you can stop and get a finite type cluster algebra. So there's this classification. And each of them has a very nice factorizing polytope associated with it. So this will be the star of the show today, okay? Um, uh, on the other hand, over the past few years, uh, we realized that by viewing scattering amplitudes not as rational functions, but really as differential forms in kinematic space, we can see these geometri uh, this geometries not in some auxiliary space, but directly in kinematic space where, act, where am amplitudes actually live in. So this is first down for n equals four superior mills. The amplitude hedron has been realized as a, a positive geometry in uh, momentum twister space or this 4D momentum space. But quite strikingly, what I'm gonna talk today is there's even geometries for the so-called bi joint phi cube uh, theory. So, uh, so at tree level, this is just a, a, a social hedron polytope or the cluster polytope of type A directly in Mendel's time space. And its canonical form give you the uh, bi joint phi cube tree amplitude. I, 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 I didn't realize I can still learn something new about this uh, dumb old phi cube uh, tree amplitude. And it's directly connected to the well sheet uh, of scattering equations and CHY formulas, which I'll elabor elaborate on uh, later. So based on this work, um, it's very natural to ask what about the loop extensions? And it turns out the loop level phi cube amplitudes are related to other types of cluster polytopes. Um, and uh, uh, throughout the talk, we'll see that uh, the idea of particles, particle string scatterings and CHY all arise from uh, the, the, the geometries in a way that we first see combinatorics and then geometry and finally physics. Okay, so let's get started with uh, chi and loops in phi cube from uh, cluster polytopes. So there is a very basic uh, but non-trivial observation about planar Feynman diagrams, especially Feynman, planar cubic Feynman diagram, is that they form polytopes, okay? So the most well-known example is probably this uh, associated hedron of n minus three dimension, uh, which describe all the cubic uh, planar trees of n point. Uh, so so these this cubic trees are sitting at the vertices of this polytope. This is a four-point example. You have S and T channel at the two endpoints of the one dimension of associated hedron, and the five cubic trees form a, 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 a pentagon for the two dimension of associated hedron, where each edge connects two 
uh, cubic trees that differ only by one uh, propagator or one mutation. And this is a three-dimensional associative key joint. And quite nicely, actually, all the tadpole, planar tadpole diagrams uh, at one loop level, they also form a polytope known as the cyclohedron. This is the, of type B or C. This is an example for three-point and four-point. They form two-dimensional and three-dimensional uh, cyclohedron. So we've seen the appearance of a uh, cluster polytope of uh, type ABC. What about type D, which is the last family with uh, uh, subscript N? Uh, essentially, we see that they actually encode all the one-loop uh, five-cube uh, planar diagrams, so every one of them, including tadpoles and so on. Uh, but, but actually, there are too many, there are almost twice as many vertices, so you need to cut it in half, as we'll explain later, and define this DN bar polytope, which is exactly every vertex corresponding to uh, one loop uh, planar uh, Feynman diagrams. So the reason that these this polytopes encode Feynman diagrams is, is actually they also encode combinatorial factorization, meaning their, fa their, 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 their boundaries are uh, factorized into smaller polytopes of this kind. So this is mostly easy seen from the thinking diagrams, like for type A, if you remove a node, it becomes product of two type A. This means the tree factorization for this uh, associohedron. And for this cyclohedron, if you go to its facet, it's A times B, which is what we expected for the tadpole diagrams. And uh, for type D, there are two kinds of factorizations, uh, facets. One of them is this factorization into D times A, or one loop times tree. And the other is actually uh, just a uh, a social hedron, which is like cutting the loop open into a tree, okay? So, so what, these are ju just uh, combinatorics. So how can we get uh, geometry and physics out of it? Uh, we first go to the kinematic space of tree level, which is spanned by all the independent Mandelstam variables of n particles. Uh, so it's of this dimension. But alternatively, we can use all the planar variables, which are x, a, b, uh, one for each diagonal of an angle. So for four point, we have S and T. For five point, we have these five diagonals and so on. So, so they are actually the, um, the propagators of a planar tree diagram, uh, or just the facets of the associohedron I, I mentioned. And if you go to uh, lower dimension phases of associohedron, you see some uh, graphs with more propagators until you reach at the vertices, which become cubic uh, tree graph. So, uh, Roughly two years ago, we realized that there's, a, there's a actually a new realization, that there's something that have never been done uh, in, in math, uh, of this, of this, um, of this uh, social hedron directly in the Mandelstam space. So this is very easy, actually. If you, if you write down the top dimensional cone where all the x variables are uh, positive, and that intersected with the n-3 dimensional plane defined by these conditions, basically this combination of x's should be some positive constant, this exactly cut out uh, uh, a social hedron uh, of n minus three dimension. And uh, the origin of these conditions can be traced back actually to some wave equations in auxiliary one plus one dimensional space time, which I don't have time to talk to, but you can refer to Nima's talk at Amplitudes uh, last week. So let's look at this, even this four point example. The condition I have is just all the S and, S and T are positive, and you intersect it with this line that S plus T is a constant. And indeed, the intersection is this one-dimensional association. You can similarly do it for five and uh, uh, six particles. Uh, like for five particles, these are the condition. You can do it for n point to show that it's a, a sociohedron. So how can we get something out of this kinematic sociohedron? Uh, uh, now we have to come to this important idea, of important co concept of canonical forms. So it turns out for every polytope, or more generally, every possible geometry, there is a unique top-dimensional differential form associated with it. So it's defined to have only simple poles on all the boundaries, all the co-dimension one boundary of this uh, polytope, and the residue is defined uh, recursively. Uh, and if you factor out the, 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 the overall measure, because the top form, you get the canonical rational function of this polytope. So the, the main result is that the, the, the canonical function of this uh, kinematic associated hedron gives you exactly planar phi cube tree. So these are the uh, four and five point examples. And this, I want to emphasize, this is not just the rewriting of Feynman diagram. So since you now have a geometric picture, you can triangulate this polytope in whatever way you want. So the Feynman diagram corresponding to a particular uh, triangulation of this polytope. So in the five point case, it's introducing something at infinity and triangulated to five pieces. But you can do any other triangulation as you want, and they give you some totally new formulas or even very uh, efficient recursion for this um, uh, phi cube amplitude 
uh, which is something un, uh, uh, I cannot imagine from the Feynman diagram point of view. So actually, this geometry exposed some hidden symmetry of phi cube amplitude that is not that is invisible in Feynman diagrams term by term. Uh, I would say this is the analog of the dual conformal symmetry we see in uh, n equals four superior mu's, but now just for this uh, very simple phi cube tree amplitude. So uh, very nicely. Actually, all the finite type cluster polytope, we just talked about type A, but all the finite type cluster uh, polytope have an ABHY realization. So again, you impose for the n facets or n cluster variable, this x could be positive, and there's a systematic way of writing down conditions in, in, in this way, uh, which I won't explain. But the result is that by this construction, you cut out a d-dimensional polytope where the boundaries actually factorize into lower dimensional uh, ABHY-like polytopes. So this realization really generalized. And for example, for, for type B or C, you have so many facets, all of them look like ABHY A times B. And uh, if you look at the canonical function of this polytope, it gives you the sum of all tadpole diagrams. And uh, same for D, you have so many facets, which you have two type of shape, either uh, factorization kind or the four limit of tree. And if you look at it, there's a natural Z2 symmetry, allow you to slice it in half because you have uh, twice as many variables. So if you slice it in half, you get this uh, polytope whose canonical function is exactly the complete one loop phi cube integrand. Okay, so again, in this story, we have different triangulations will give you different formulas for these amplitudes, uh, which again expose some hidden symmetry for, for loop level phi cube amplitude. Okay, so now let's move to the second part, which is about uh, uh, um, uh, stringy canonical forms and scattering equations. So there's a, actually a well-known associohedron, which is just by compactifying the modular space of open string world sheet. Okay, so this, this is well-known to be an associohedron. So it's a very natural question is how do you connect this world sheet associohedron to the kinematic one, the ABHY we just talked about. It, it, it turns out the link is in the scattering equations. So if you pull back the scattering equations on this subspace I talked, it provides you a map uh, actually a diffeomorphism from this modular space to the kinematic association. So it's a one-to-one -one map um, uh, that, that the scattering equation is providing. And we know something very nice from, uh, if you have a diffeomorphism from a positive geometry A to B, which is you can actually write the canonical form of B as a push forward of A by summing over all the solutions or all the pre-images of the, the map. Okay, so once you have a diffeomorphism, there's something you can do about their uh, canonical forms, and by summing over the solution of scattering equations for the canonical form of modular space, you immediately get the, uh, the, the canonical form of ABHY, which is phi cube amplitude. So this is actually the geometric origin of CHY formula for phi cube. And now we want to ask, is this just special for the string world sheet, or is this something more general? Okay, so it turns out for any polytope, any uh, uh, rationally realizable polytope, uh, uh, there is actually an integral which we call stringy canonical form. It can be viewed as an alpha prime deformation of this canonical f of, of the canonical form of this polytope. So this provides a new way of computing the canonical form if you take alpha prime to zero, but now you really have a finite alpha prime extension of it. And more importantly, as, I was, uh, uh, as we will see, that this canonical form can also be obtained as a push forward using the saddle point of this in integral, uh, which is in the opposite limit. Okay, so this is the phenomenon of CHY uh, scattering equation. And uh, now, now we see it in a general context. So let's consider this integral in the positive region, d-dimensional positive region where we have this form. So we need some regulator to regulate the divergence, right? So for divergence at zero, we put this x raised to some positive power, capital X. And hopefully we can regulate the div uh, divergence at infinity by putting some a uh, polynomial of x raised to some negative power. So it's, it's been known for a while that uh, for such a polynomial, the, one of the most important things to consider the Newton polytope of, of, of it. So the Newton polytope of a polynomial is defined to be the convex hull of all these exponential uh, exponent vectors uh, living uh, uh, z to the d. So here are some examples for one variable, two variable, or, or more. You get a polytope out of the polynomial. And uh, now I can present the theorem about this integral based on the Newton polytope. So the integral converges if and only if the Newton polytope is top dimensional, and this vector x, where it is just all the exponents, lies inside c times this Newton polytope. And the canonical function of this Newton polytope gives you the leading order of the integral if you take alpha prime to zero, okay? 
So more importantly, I think, uh, if you take the saddle point of the integral, saddle point equation of the integral, we call it a scattering equation, it gives you a map, actually a diffeomorphism from the integration domain exactly to this Newton polytope. So this implies a push forward formula. You can push forward this, uh, this form by summing over solution of the saddle point, by summing over saddle point to exactly get this uh, canonical form. So this is a 1D example, the beta function that you see the, uh, both the leading order and the push forward give you the form on the um, line interval, which is the Newton polytope. So we see this is a prototype of the, the phenomenon that alpha prime to zero and infinity are uh, directly connected. But actually we are done here, because the most general integral we'll consider are like this. So instead of just one polynomial to some power, we have multiple polynomials. And the generalization from a single polynomial to this case is actually trivial. You can consider this C's to be rational first. And instead of the Newton polytope, you have the Minkowski sum of all the polytopes weighted by C, and the, the convergence and the leading order are just like before. So this is a, a, a two-dimensional integral with three polynomials. The Minkowski sum of them give you the uh, pentagon, so the leading order is given by this pentagon canonical function, which is five-point. And this is actually the five-point string integral, as we will see. So let me ex uh, explain the uh, magic of scattering equation in this most general setting. So if you take the saddle point equation, it gives you a map from integration domain to this Minkowski sum, the polytope. So the leading order of your integral, which is the, the, the canonical form, is also given by push forward by summing over saddle points. So we see this is a one line conceptual understanding of the phenomenon that field theory amplitudes of uh, this string like integral is equal to the CHY formula where you use uh, the high energy limit. So this has, this has nothing to do with actual strings per se. It's really a very general phenomenon for any polytope. And if you do apply it to the ABHY associohedron, you, you, very remarkably, you are led to rediscover the open string integral with cobalt nielsen factor as the, generate, uh, as the regulator. And the field theory limit, of course, give, give you phi cube, which can also be obtained as the push forward using this CHY scattering equation from the Grossman limit. Uh, and, and if you do it for other type, you get some alpha prime deformation of the field theory amplitude at one loop level. So what are they? And this is the third part where I'll talk about the generalized uh, string integrals, okay? So we see that the polytopal realization of this factorizing structure is already very non-trivial, but it's still not fully rigid. So we want to ask if there is some kind of binary realization where boundaries are reached by zero or one. So we start with type A. For each diagonal of n gone, you can assign a u variable and ask one minus u to be the product of all the diagonals crossing uh, that, that one. So this is a four point and five point. You have five such equations. Only three are independent. And already here, you can see that if you send u13 to zero, the two crossing one go to one, so they decouple. And you are left with a four point equation for this uh, sub polygon. So generally, we can define a u space as the solution space of this u equations. Um, um, it turns out it's n minus three dimensional, so uh, because there are some redundancy. And very nicely, this U space uh, has the same boundary structure as a, a social hedron. We already see the example for five point. So for six point, there are two kinds of boundaries. One is looking like a five point times three point, that is trivial, three point. And uh, the other is the four point times four point. So this is really like an hedron, but it's defined purely algebraically. I haven't said which number field I'm, I'm dealing with here. I can, it can be the complex case. But if you do require u to be positive, then it uh, forces all the u to between zero and one. That gives you the positive part, which indeed cut out a curvy hedron, like in this example for the curvy pentagon for five particle case. So we see that uh, this, U space, this U space actually lead us to the well sheet. So just from the U equations, we can discover more general equations that for any four ordered points, this monomial of U, the product of U, satisfied, they add up to one. The original case is a special, uh, the original U equation is a special case of this. And the monomial also satisfied this relation, which lead to, uh, I mean, these two constraints are exactly constraints satisfied by cross ratio of n points on P1. So we just discovered that the U and their products are just cross visual uh, four points. And uh, the U space is actually a gauging invariant way of parameterizing the uh, M0N. And uh, if you go to the positive part, all the cross ratio are between zero and one. So the five points are, oh, sorry, the, the N points are ordered. And uh, the U equation actually allows you to see exactly there are so many connected components. So without knowing the well sheet interpretation, you can already discover there are this many kinetic components for the real case, 
Each one of them is a positive power with its own ordering. And for the complex case, they will uh, induce a SN automorphism uh, on the space. So the, the really interesting thing is that now this U equation, U space generalized to all finite type. So um, the, the, the thing is that for, for uh, we still, for every facet, every cluster variable, we have a U, and we still impose one minus U equals product of the incompatible ones, except now we can have some power, okay? So for type A case, this incompatibility degree can only be zero or one, but for other types, like B, C, D, they can be two, or even for exceptional case, they can be three. So from this U equations, very remarkably, we see, again, a D-dimensional U space, which is like an algebraic way of defining the boundary structure of a cluster polytope. And they have many applications in cluster algebra that I, that I don't have time to go into. I just want to point out that if the U's are positive, then again, they cut out the curvy cluster polytope for these other types. And uh, in the real case, we, uh, we can again see the notion of orderings for these other types. Okay, so once you have the general U space, it's very natural to consider now some integrals on the space, which are what I call the generalized notion of string amplitude. So uh, first for open string, we can do the integral in the positive part with this canonical form, but now we need to regulate because they have all the simple pole on the boundary. So the regulator is provided by exactly every U raised to some positive power because the boundaries are reached by U goes to zero. And for type A, from here, we rediscover the disk integral. And for all other types, we have some generalized uh, open string amplitudes, which are strikingly similar to the actual string amplitude. So we know, of course, they are all the stringy canonical form for ABHY. So they have this usual alpha prime to zero limit for field theory um, and push forward. But very nicely, at finite alpha prime, they are all meromorphic functions where the poles are this x equals uh, integers. And they have the similar notion of channel duality and uh, the exponential soft, uh, softness at the uv when x are very large. Uh, most interestingly, at finite alpha prime, all this integral, they have this factorization at massless poles. So let me explain this better. So for the disk integral, it's, it's known that if you send one of the x to zero by u equations, the, um, the, uh, the crossing u's uh, decouple, so your cobalt nielsen factor, which is this u to some power, factorize into two piece. So at finite alpha prime, this disk integral actually factorizes into uh, uh, two smaller disk integrals. And now we have this notion for any finite type, okay? So like for D, at finite alpha prime, it will factorize into D times A or just uh, 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 A. And uh, we can also naturally consider a uh, more general open string integral with two orderings or closed string integrals for, for, for two orderings in a complex space. For type A, all these open and closed string integrals, they are the basis for any massless string tree amplitude. But now we have the uh, question that we still don't know what's the physical meaning of this other type uh, generalization of uh, string amplitude. So finally, we can have some fun with arithmetic geometry uh, even for this, for this space. So it turns out that if you want to count how many points are there uh, for, a for, a, for a U over a finite field, say FP, where P is a prime number, uh, this can tell you a lot of topological properties of this space. For example, for AN case, we know it's a hyperplane arrangement, so the counting must be a polynomial. It's actually this nice polynomial, which knows some famous number about amplitudes related to M0N. For example, if you plug in P equals minus one, this is the number of connected components, okay? There's so many. And P, P equals zero gives you the number of independent top forms, which is N minus two factorial known to amplitude people as the KK basis. If you plug in P, P equals one, it's the oral characteristic or the number of saddle points uh, known as uh, in, in BCG or CHY, this N minus three factorial. Now we can also have this counting for other types, like for B and C, you have the number of orderings, KK and uh, uh, BCG and so on. Okay, so, so let me just uh, uh, conclude. Uh, in the most general level, uh, what we found is uh, for any polytope, uh, there is a alpha prime deformation of it that we call stringy canonical form, with alpha prime to zero give you back the canonical form. And now we see the general phenomena, scattering equations are important both for alpha prime to infinity and zero limit. Uh, uh, our favorite polytopes are this ABHY realization of the cluster polytopes, which uh, uh, at the same time explaining factorization and why amplitudes are polytopes for phi cube, chi, and loop. If you take stringy canonical form for them, you get the generalized string integrals, which are nicely tied to this uh, binary realization or generalized version of uh, world sheet. So, so there are obviously lots of uh, open questions, like how do you go to loop, all loops for uh, the phi cube case? 
uh, gluons and gravitons, and there are clearly connections of these cluster type integrals in, in, uh, to the scattering amplitude in n equals four superior mu and twister strings and so on. And finally, we also hope to go beyond just uh, flat space and, 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 and apply the geometry more wildly. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful talk. So is there any comments or question? Thank you again. Okay, thank you.